Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Now, believe me when I tell you, God wants to give you something today. So join me now and say, Father, I receive all that you have for me today, even my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now then, we're talking about how to use the Bible. Let me show you a scripture in Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. I want you to see something here now. It says, for whatever things were written before, we are written for our learning. For whatever things we are written before, we are written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So now, here's another reason why we have the Bible. So it says, all these things that have been written, they were all written for our learning they are written so we can read look at it and learn remember what i told you the bible is earlier it is a compendium of testimonies now all these testimonies are written for our learning everything you find in the bible now why is it so important to know this because that's what i told you the bible is a book of truth the bible is a book of truth now, why I say it's a book of truth, it's not because, oh, God sat down and detected it. No, but everything you read about happened. There is no lie written in the Bible. But you know, in the Bible, it told us Satan spoke. Yes. And you don't want to quote the words of Satan and say the Bible said, or God said, the word of God said. But Satan spoke words in the Bible. See, now that's to tell you that Satan can speak. So all these things are written for our learning. But then the question comes today, what have you learned from all the things you read in the Bible? What have you learned? I find out today that we are so attached to teachings that have been handed down to us. And that's what I was telling you, I think yesterday, I said, look, there is life after Jesus that we have not really paid attention to. And that's why, to a great extent, we, we haven't moved into the glorious life that God has ordained for us from the beginning. God ordained a glorious life for us from the beginning, not, not because of Jesus. See that now? You see, some people think that, okay, God had a life for Adam, and then um, Adam sinned. And God now gave us something greater than Adam. Yes, what God gave to us is far greater than Adam. But hey, even Adam was promised that life. So it's not something God did because, oh, Adam has sinned. I know what to do. Let me slam Satan's head by giving man a super life. No, sir. He, he, had, he had planned it from the beginning. He planned it for Adam also that we are going to... Adam was supposed to meet Jesus. Praise <laughs> God. Yes, because Adam was not going to have life until Jesus comes and ministers life to him. That's why I told you, Jesus, his original purpose from the foundation of the world, God have ordained him that he will come and give us life. Now, if Adam had not sinned, if Adam had obeyed God and continued walking with the Lord, I'm telling you the truth, maybe Jesus wouldn't have been born. See that now? He would have come without being born. The Lord will give you a great understanding. So why was Jesus born of a virgin? Because God wanted him 
to die as the price for death. Put that in your mind. God wanted him to die as the price for death. He was going to make the payment for death. Now, if death was not having its reign over man, there wouldn't have been a need for Jesus to die. Now, this is the reason, you know, sometimes when you, when, when you teach things like this, people don't know why. It corrects a whole lot of theology. Because people believe that God had planned from the foundation of the world that Jesus was going to die. That's not true. There is no scripture that gives us that understanding. The scripture most people quote, oh, the Bible said the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. No, it was not the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. Read that scripture very well again. He was talking about the book of life that was written from the foundation of the world, not the Lamb that was slain. The Lamb was slain, not from the foundation of the world, but the book of life was written from the foundation of the world. Get that set in your mind. Now that's how people confuse things because the English was not clear. So someone interpreted it in such a way, then we begin to form teachings from that. He couldn't have slayed the lamb from the foundation of the world. For what reason? Oh, he knows everything, so he knows man was going to sin. Uh-uh, come on now, put your brain to work. No, Adam was not destined to sin. He made a choice to sin. So death began to walk. Now, because death was walking, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Lord will help you today. Now, because death was walking, and, and what's that? What, what do you mean death was walking? Death is a spirit. And death was laying claim to every man. Now, because God released those words from his mouth that the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die. And that happened. So that elevated the spirit of death over man. And now death begins to lay claim to every man. Lays claim to every man. Everybody that is born, death just comes and says, look, I have a stake in you. When I'm ready for you, I'll come for you. Death was elevated like that. And now God had to deal with that thing. He had to deal with it. Now, we still read the scripture of certain people that didn't die. They defeated death. Enoch, Elijah. Moses, they defeated death. But yet, they didn't pay the price for death. So God needed someone who was going to pay the price for death. Now, after the price of death is paid, someone else can take advantage of that payment. Now, I want you to follow me. So, that's the reason Jesus had to be born. Now, he was born <laughs> without a man. And there's a reason for that. The reason Jesus was born without a man, you know the story, was because the name Jesus was not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. <sighs> Understand this. The names in the book of life have been written before Adam was formed. And hear me, every name written in that book came from a seed. Every name came from a man. Every name came from a man. Till the last person that will be born that's written in that book. So God has the number of everybody that is supposed to be born. And every one of them have their tree. 
Study the scriptures. These things are there. Everyone have their names according to their generations in their tree. So, starting from the first man, you find the next, you find the next, you find the next, you find the next. And that's how it spreads. So, everybody from God ought to come from that tree. But now, God needed someone who's going to come and make the payment for debt. He had not written this consigning anybody in the book of life. So what's he going to do? He is God. So he now bypassed the book that he had written and took a woman and planted the seed in her and she gave birth to a son and he lived on earth completely obedient to God and eventually when it was time, I told her the reason he was born is so that he would die. Simple. And when the time came, he went to the cross, paid the penalty for death. Now, this is the reason Jesus couldn't have married. This is the reason Jesus couldn't have had any child. Why? Because how's the child going to come? Where's the child going to fit in? It's not written in the book of life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, these, these are truths that only the Holy Spirit will help you see and teach you. So he finished his work and he left. You go find the name of Jesus in the book of life, you will not see it. Why? Because he is the custodian of the book. <laughs> you understand that? He's the custodian of the book. Just like I, 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 think, I think that's true. The Queen of England doesn't have a passport. She doesn't have a passport. Why doesn't she have a passport? She's the one that issues the passport. <laughs> so, so every British citizen you know, the passport they hold was issued to them by the queen. So the queen doesn't have her own passport. Who was going to issue it to her? You see that now? So she goes wherever she wants to go. Oh. So Jesus. <sighs> now, now understand these things. So that's why he died. Now, when he died, the fulfillment, the penalty for death was paid. But since, since that penalty was paid, ask yourself this question. How many, how many have taken advantage of the payment of that death penalty? Death is still reigning till this day. Now, you see, let's not coin it anyhow. That's what I was telling you earlier, a few days ago. As I was telling you that we have not begun to live the life that Jesus brought to us yet. We are still living the life before and with Jesus. We have still not understood to enter into something that made Jesus to come. I told you, see, because his name was not written in the book of life, that was why he could not fulfill the ministry of giving life while he was on earth. He could not. That was not written concerning him. All that he could do was to preach it. But he didn't give it. So he told his disciples, hey, guys, I've got to go. I can't give you as I am. No, it is not written. It is not written. Oh, but the prophet spoke about it. Yes, because when God wanted to, God will not do anything without speaking about it first. 
But I'm talking about the original book of life. What was written in it. And then he came. And then he finished. He said, look, it is better for you guys that I go. It is when I go, I can now step in. It, 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 the going of Jesus, not just that I'm dead, I'm gone, I've risen, I've finished my work. I'm going, no. When he rose from the dead, hear me, hear me. People still don't understand this. When he rose from the dead, he didn't rise the same Jesus they knew. He rose into the glory that he was from the beginning. So what beginning? Jesus was there from the beginning. Yes. What do you mean he was there? He was the word of God. He was the word of God. John 1 tells us, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then he now tells us, the word became flesh. The word became flesh. He existed before the beginning. And his role where man was concerned was to come and administer life to man. That's why I told you if Adam and Eve had behaved themselves, Jesus would still have come and ministered life. Just like Melchizedek came and, and ministered blessings to Abraham's life. And he finished that and he left. From that moment, Abraham entered into another realm of blessing. Our time is up. Praise <laughs> God. We're going to continue from here tomorrow. God bless you. Have the best day ever. Bye-bye.